Hello humans, hello humans. It's February 17. It's before uh, <laughs> eight in the morning. Gotta get a move on. I've gotta make my way inland. I'm going to go and um, uh, look at some property. Got a, I'm pretty serious about it, so I'm taking all of the gear, the cameras, the 100-foot tape, the small tape, all of the little measuring devices and shit. It's, a, uh, it's only recently on the market, which is eh, not the best way, ideally, to purchase because the you really, in this particular kind of a real estate market, you want to let them... Uh, you know, have a couple of hundred days on the market not selling so that they'll accept your reasonable offer, right? I, I don't really like um, negotiating down, uh, you know, people on that kind of thing. I, I don't really like driving a hard deal and, uh, you know, I want everybody to be happy in a um, any kind of a um, uh, financial arrangement, right? It's in, in my benefit to my interest that they also get what they want out of the deal. And so in that regard, you know, I'm not trying to, to um, drive someone down on price necessarily, but I want it to be reflective and realistic. And so, um, so I saw a chart today. Uh, maybe I even reposted it on uh, Twitter. Uh, that showed the uh, price of a the uh, of a new house, the average new house in the U.S. It based in Bitcoin, and it was like uh, you know 2012 or 14 or something. It took uh, 50,024 Bitcoin to buy the average new house, and uh, today it's only taking eight. Now, as I as I go along here, I'm gonna so I've got to head inland. Uh, way inland uh, for me. I'm going back into some of the um, uh, old stomping ground of like uh, 107 when he was a homie up here, right? He would he would know this area. So I'm, I'm a couple of hours in on this journey uh, to get there. And then I'm going to have to do a bunch of work and, and you know, meet some people. I got to meet Kale. He's my, um, my guy here. He's going to be the foreman on this particular project. But as I go along here, just to let you know, I'm going to be taking my supplements <laughs> and with my coffee because I um, I had to leave so early. I, I had to just gulp breakfast down, get the little dog out for her walk on the beach, get everything set up for my wife. Uh, she's uh, mobility uh, challenged, so I've got to set everything up for her because I'm going to be gone most of the day. Probably won't get back until uh, late this afternoon. Uh, that is because I'm really serious about this house. So now um, we see that it took 50,024 Bitcoin to buy the average house, uh, 2012 or 2014, and now it's down to eight, right? And so I have a few Bitcoin. I earned in Bitcoin uh, back when everybody said I was a doofus. And wow, I wasn't such a doofus after all. Uh, so uh, I've got some Bitcoin and I'm gonna convert those because of um, basically what I'm what's driving all of this is my wife's health issues, right? Uh, I need to have a, um, a house that is a, a wheelchair easy, right? So that we can, and you know, that's set up for handicapped access and stuff, uh, which we do not now. And then of course there's all of the problems with the house now because of the fucked hard contractor. Anyway though, so I'm gonna go look at this new place. It's not a new house, it's way old. It's uh, uh, from the 70s, has never been remodeled. Uh, I think it's an estate sale and uh, I'll have to gut it. Okay, so it'll have to be uh, completely gutted. Uh, it'll have to, um, it's gonna have to have, you know, new siding, new roof, new insulation, everything. Old houses, old insulation up here really can stink after, you know, 30 or 40 or 60 years. So I'm just gonna take it down to the studs uh, and and redo it. This will, of course, also allow me to put on uh, modern materials uh, and uh, put on a new roof. And of course, you know what my color scheme is going to be for the outside of that house. Even the fucking trim is going to be blue. Swallowing of a supplement ensues. Anyway, so um, it's an interesting 
kind of a thing. I didn't want another project. This one is close enough to uh, where my guy Kale is uh, located. He's sort of like an adopted grandson and uh, employee kind of a, a kind of a situation, right? He does stuff for me, and I, I pay him for his time and and his smarts. Anyway, he's um, he's going to be the uh, wrangler on this uh, rehab, uh, so. I'll have to do a lot, but I shouldn't have to do a lot of this kind of transit. Initially, there will be, you know, two or three or four or five of these trips. Then once we get into the groove, uh, once we get the house, we should be fairly well set up for uh, Kale to do most of the on-site stuff um, prior to me coming to inspect, uh, prior to paying uh, all the subcontractors and stuff. Uh, we've got a very tight schedule. Uh, we, I want to get this place uh, purchased and rehabbed, taken down to studs and rebuilt um, by the end of June. So, very ambitious. Anyway, which is why I'm out early in the fucking morning uh, heading inland. Uh, this will be a long, probably a series. I'll probably do a bunch of these little, a uh, bunch of um, audios here uh, on trips like this because it's, uh, you know, two and a half, three hours each way. And um, uh, there's gonna be one pee break at the pee palace <laughs> on State Route 8. But uh, other than that, uh, it's, you know, uh, pedal to the metal kind of thing just to get there. Uh, and like, I've got people I've gotta meet there today. Um, anyway though, so a lot of shit to talk about. Um, where do we start? Okay, so let's let's start with um, uh, Gene Decode and um, 107. Okay, so uh, 107 is like a uh, legit fellow. Okay, he's not a, um, a poser. Uh, he's what the Russians would call a serious individual, and. Uh, he will talk to, and he'll be on uh, interviews and, and uh, videos with uh, individuals that I may find um, disconcerting, right? Uh, because I find these individuals to be posers and and uh, fakers and grifters and so on. So uh, 107, um, he may talk to um, Charlie Ward, right? procurer for Jimmy Savile, uh, a money launderer, and and a grifter, and who spews bullshit. So, but but uh, in my opinion, Juan is, is working another uh, issue there, right? He's after reaching the audience, and, and to a certain extent, uh, he does not particularly care at, uh, about the um, the boost that his presence on these uh, videos will provide. So he doesn't really mind boosting uh, Charlie Ward's status by having uh, an interview with him. Now, I haven't seen him talk to Charlie Ward in, uh, you know, fuck all ever. So, so maybe it was just that one or two times way back when. Um, part of the issue for Juan is that, uh, or part of his thinking, is that we are in a um, a self-cleansing environment, okay? And so that, that truly is the case. Uh, we're already seeing it, right? You got people that are, all right, so we're at that point of the process where we're having all this infighting. And the infighting is a necessary part. It's a, it's a sign of um, all of us approaching victory that we've, we've overcome a certain level of um, oppression, if you will, and we know that we will be uh, victorious. And as you get towards victory, all these movements inevitably uh, have their own infighting, where you would have, you know, when things are dire, you just don't give a shit. You're not going to put your energy into trying to call out the grifters and get involved in all the drama. 
Uh, but as you're certain of winning, which it's certain now, we, we, as long as we don't stop, we will not be defeated. We've overcome that, right? The mother weffers are on the run. The Elohim uh, worship cult is getting the shit kicked out of it everywhere. And it's going to continue and get worse for them. As long as we don't stop. As long as we don't stop, humanity wins. Okay? And so, um, uh, this is a self-correcting process. And so, 107's um, purpose in, in his political animal world was to uh, basically educate all of the normies and the uh, conspiracy guys um, about what's going on at a political level. Lots of us are not particularly political animals, uh, nor do we really care, right? And so um, uh, one is not particularly concerned about being on um, interviews with people, and he'll call people out on some of their silly, uh, silliness, right? And so he does not support this QFS nonsense. He doesn't support Nasara or Gisara or any of that shit, right? There's not going to be a Zimbabwe, uh, you know, a Zim or a, a Dinar revalue. Um, we know that all of these fucking fiats are... No incentive for uh, the uh, Zimbabwe or Iraq to make you rich by re revaluing their currency. In fact, it's actually in their interest as the issuers of these fiat currencies to devalue them even further. So, they, they, you know, just like the Fed, they want to print more of them. Um, in any event, though, so one does not support... Uh, never heard him support the QFS shit or any of that kind of crap, right? Uh, Juan doesn't doesn't uh, go along with that. Um, in my opinion, he was kind of an idiot for not slapping Kerry Cassidy down about him being um, JFK Jr. still alive, right? And so yeah, that's come back to haunt him. It was really a dumb move. Juan's not. Juan's a good political guy. Um, I don't know how uh, individually strategic he is, right, in terms of his thinking. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so we're at this point in the, um, in the process where, we're gonna, where, we're, where all this infighting is coming on out. We're seeing it with the uh, people take on the, uh, the millions and millions of dollars. Uh, bought houses all over. Theoretically, he owns an $8 million house in Greece. Um, with a bunch of acreage around it. Uh, you know, some of these things have debt on them. It's hard to say uh, how much of that is actually factual. He likes to puff himself up. Uh, you know, he's totally full of shit. He groomed a 14-year-old girl. And, uh, you know, so, <laughs> hey, guy, it's, you know, it is what it is. And he's a grifter. So uh, people are calling him out on all of this. Uh, same thing is true of lots of these individuals, right? And I'm calling out Gene Decode because he's a, uh, an idiot here, right? Just like Gene Decode is, a, he is to the Nasara Gasara QFS shit uh, and medbeds as Phil Godlewski is to um, uh, Q and uh, that sort of thing, right? So Phil claims to be a, um, uh, so they're both, both stolen valor, right? You got Phil Godlewski claiming to be a political advisor to Trump and a handler to uh, all these people. I think it was, he's a handler of General Flynn and he tells Scavino what to do and all of this kind of shit, right? Total horseshit, absolute bullshit. But, you know, truth will out on all of these things. And people will naturally rise up and, t and tell these motherfuckers, you know, we think you're a scammer and, you know, because you stole all of his money and you're not a good guy, right? Uh, for Phil Godlewski. Uh, for uh, Gene Decode, we've got something almost the same. We've got a, uh, a cult-like thing going with that fucker. Plus, my bitch with him is the... Um, uh, the QFS stuff, the flat earth stuff, and the um, med bed stuff. And so, uh, that reminds me to t take one of my supplements. Um, so, 
looking at that, um, all right, so what really pisses me off is when these individuals uh, take advantage of um, the pain and suffering that is out there all throughout our social order. So you've got Gene Decode pimping med beds and, the, and talking to people and saying that they're there, they're coming, they're, they're close, we'll have them in just months, and so on and so on, right? And he's full of shit. And he's doing it to people that have MS. And eventually that wears out. He can't keep saying, you know, six months into it, he can't keep saying it's a month out. Just like Gene Decode can't keep saying that, oh, well, you know, it's only three or four months away and we'll have those med beds. The military's got them now. They're manufacturing them in Kansas and they're going to set up big med bed centers and all of this kind of shit. Bunch of total crap. Absolute lies. And it's, um, it's an evil fucking lie because it's going to uh, affect people emotionally in a very negative way when this does not happen while they are physically suffering uh, from these debilitating diseases. Now, I've had a debilitating disease. And uh, it was no fucking fun, all right? And so, personally, uh, now, I think of Gene Decode from his voice and from his language. I think of him in his, in his mid-50s. He's uh, stolen valor, claiming to be ex-military and shit, and claiming to be a whistleblower. That's why Kerry Gass Cassidy likes him, is because he used the magic word of whistleblower. Um, but personally, I think this guy is a, um, a really skeezy, evil grifter. And um, it would please me that he might take offense and would attack me so I could bust him in the, in the face really, really, really hard get out some of my aggression, right? I had somebody send me email, I think it was a woman, saying that, you know, uh, she was sorry for all of my anger <laughs> and that my swearing was, uh, you know, swearing at all of these fuckers uh, was a sign of my anger. And it's like, Okay, not disputing you. I'm angry at these bastards, right? They're they're causing uh, harm and suffering and and uh, distress wherever these motherfuckers go and open their mouths. And you know, I personally um, am very offended by them, and uh, and I'm angry at them. And so yeah, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> no alibis. It's it's like legit. I'm angry at them. Anyway, um, so uh, the whole Gasara thing and Nessara and then ultimately the QFS is all bogus, right? They've, they've been going on about Gesara and Nessara since the 1990s, all right? If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now, just like we've been doing the med bids since the 1990s. That's when... Um, I think it was David Wilcock was talking about him, right? Uh, David Wilcock and Kerry Cassidy and Bill Ryan back in the day. I think they talked about the med bids then too. Uh, not 100% sure, but, but we were talking about them in the 90s. There were people saying that, oh, the med beds are, are coming any day now. And, you know, conceptually, it's an okay idea that you would lie down on this bed and in some way receive energy. Now, nobody ever talks about how that energy is to be delivered to you. And... Um, uh, you know, so we know that right now we're already doing this. We've got TENS units, we've got Skinar, both of those put electricity into you in a pulsed phased approach. We've got the red light therapy. Um, there's even um, multivariant uh, therapy, uh, which is uh, actually a lot of true brown and true uh, reds uh, in, the, um, in the red light therapy. Also, by the way, do not fall for these um, guys on their videos with the screens behind them that are scrolling all these little squares of colors, right? That in no way imparts any kind of energy to your body at all. It's gonna fuck over your brain if you were to stare at it long enough, uh, but it's not actively broadcasting anything out to you that uh, you, it's the same level of energy and, and everything you would get as if you were watching a video game on that same screen or a movie. 
okay, you're limited to the screen itself. Those screens can only do uh, blue dominant um, wavelengths. So if they're claiming that you're getting some special frequencies out of this scrolly thing, it's just a computer program that just uh, divides the screen up and, and probably uses a, a semi-random or at least a um, uh, very diverse uh, algorithm uh, to put up the little squares of colors. But that's all it's doing, is putting up little squares of colors. In no way is there any kind of uh, other energetic approach or any other energy coming into your body as a result of that. Uh, so, um, uh, anyway, so gene decode, uh, you know, he's real scum in my opinion. Uh, now we got other people that also share that opinion that have been in his cult. I didn't realize he had a cult. So that, that's kind of my failing. So, you know, I mean, I was aware of Phil Godlewski uh, back, you know, maybe a year ago or something. I don't know. I, I came across his name back then. I listened to him once do these uh, weird little question things, and he, you know, where he just simply answers yes or no to questions. Uh, and it's like, you know, this guy's an idiot. You know, truly, I thought this guy was demented. Uh, and now it turns out you know, having all of his money stolen by this motherfucker. Um, so, you know, uh, Phil Godlewski, Gene Decode, uh, you know, Charlie Ward, these guys will answer, um, you know, with, with to their karma. But in the meantime, they're also going to get a, shift, a lot of shit from the rest of us as well. So, uh, you know, if you're counting on Gazara, if you're counting on um, the QFS or, or Dinar revalue, you're shit out of luck. It ain't going to happen. Okay. Now, also, the QFS physically cannot happen. All right. So um, I once heard Charlie Ward or somebody, maybe it was Gene Decode even, talk about what the QFS is and how they're going to digitize and attach everything to the blockchain. All right, well, okay, so a couple of things, right? There are thousands, over 10,000 blockchains. So it's not one thing. It is a designed algorithm that has some data in a block. That's why we call it a blockchain. It's a defined amount of data, right? So in the Bitcoin blockchain, there, you know, be 580 bytes uh, per block or some number, right? I'm not sure the exact number. At the top of the block, um, reading down uh, will be the address of the block before it. And at the bottom of that block will be the address of the block that's going to follow it. And so that's why it's called a chain, because each block is has the address of the one ahead of it and the one behind it. And these are mined, all right? And so that's a blockchain. In that blockchain, there is data, which is your private key and public key for your individual coins. And that's basically all that's there. There's in Bitcoin, there's 80 bytes that you can shove other stuff into, uh, you know, free space, so to speak. And the idea is, uh, according to Charlie Ward and these guys, that, you know, you would somehow have like, so you could like take the ID number, your VIN number on your car and put it on the blockchain. It's like, okay, fine. Doesn't do squat for you, right? And no, you can't uh, put every single asset on the planet on the blockchain. And oh, by the way, if you did, you would be doing all of the work for the mother weffers that they want done because they want to do, uh, they want to, to analyze or they want to um, assess and then uh, catalog every single physical resource on the planet as part of their management thing, right? Including you and everything you think you own because they think they own it all. So, um, so that would, if you were to do the blockchain where you put it, you know, your motor home on it and your, your dishes and, you know, your blankets and your towels and your house. And, and all it is, is just a number representing your towels, right? It in no way your, your towels are not on the, on the blockchain, so to speak. It's just a number saying, you know, uh, this was the date I bought them and how, how many I have or whatever. Um, and it's just a number within that, that uh, space on a particular block on the uh, blockchain. Also note 
that you have to have computers running to mine these blocks. And by mining, it's a process where they create a new block with new data showing a new transaction. And then they, they seek for consensus that this can be put on the blockchain with all the other miners. But so it's lots of different people that have these um, computers running that have the, um, <coughs> the information in these blocks, which are basically just a database. And, and that's sort of how it all works. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but not a lot. And they, um, the idea of the whole thing, as far as the QFS, somehow uh, would be that uh, you would be able to have, um, that, that somehow you are going to get rich in this process. There is a lot on that QFS shit that's just so vague, you're not really sure what the hell they're saying, what the hell they're talking about, right? Um, So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Nasara, Gesara, QFS, it's all bullshit. It's never going to happen. Uh, the revaluation of the currencies is never going to happen. Um, defunct <coughs> countries uh, like Iraq uh, don't revalue, right? They, there's no point to revaluing currencies at all, ever, from a central bank's viewpoint. Uh, they just want to keep printing and printing and printing and debase it as they go along because of the uh, impact of the currency on things like, you know, Social Security and paying for it, etc. Right. And we're actually headed the other way. So we're not headed into a world of increasing uh, fiat currencies where we're going to get new countries and new fiat currencies being invented uh, or created. Instead, we're actually going into a world where we will have... Um, some level, uh, well, we're, we're going to have uh, resource-backed currencies, but they're not convertible. So, you know, you might have a, uh, a ruble, and that ruble is backed by oil, but you're not going to be able to take your ruble into, uh, you know, a government office and have them give you oil for it, or to a bank and have them give you oil for it. Um, so, and we won't also have, we won't have uh, money that's backed that way so or we won't have money that's convertible so we won't have uh, gold or, or fiat that's convertible into directly into um, metals at a bank the way we did in the 1920s uh, we will have gold and silver be very much more valuable and be uh, tradable um, uh, media uh, a species for for trading to um, buy and sell, that will occur, and it'll occur as a result of the breakdown of the fiats, not the fiats getting better and more robust. And bear in mind, QFS, uh, to a lesser extent, but for sure, Nesara and Gasara depend on fiat currency, right? They depend, their, their whole thing is structured around the fiat currency. And we all know fiat currency is shit. It's, it's, a, a, a fake currency that you rent from uh, the Elohim worship cult to do your business and they rake off all kinds of um, uh, illegal profit from it uh, because they don't do anything to create that currency. They've just uh, constructed a giant grift. So the Elohim worship cult, the central bank, um, all of these guys are basically just giant Phil Godlewskis, right? They're just giant grifters. Um, Anyway, so we're, we're not going to have that kind of a, a world. What we are going to have is a very chaotic world in which we will have certain things appear uh, manifest um, relative to currencies and so on that are um, at first blush sort of connected to some of the uh, Wu conspiracies, right? But it's not really as the Wu conspiracies uh, have um, uh, magnified these sort of things. So we will, for instance, have gold and silver coins that will be able to be identified and tagged. They can do it now uh, with a machine. You can put it in there and it'll get a unique, uh, it'll give you a number that's a unique 
uh, serial number, so to speak, based on, of that coin based on its uh, metallic composition and uh, reads it down to a fine level. And you would be able to put on that coin in this little, so that's why, in our opinion, they, the U.S. Mint has been manufacturing the uh, eagles um, and other coins with this little flat spot on the rim, and they're going to use that little flat spot to attach a um, an ID number, so to speak, by being able to put that little flat spot into a machine that will read the metallic composition, and then you would be able to get that metallic composition number and go out and look on a blockchain to see who owned it. Because what would happen is the blockchain would be a record, very much like Bitcoin, of the transaction where you bought that coin and it was transferred over to you. So theoretically, you could use that um, as a method of remote payment, right? So, so you would be able to ascertain and, and prove that you had X number of gold coins by contacting this um, blockchain and uh, getting the information based on your private key, just like you would get the information based on your private keys uh, in Bitcoin to show that you had X number of Bitcoins. Uh, so it's going to be complicated, guys. It's not, it's not a simple thing. There will no, not be any simple, easy uh, solutions to any of our problems. We've got, you know, 50, 80 years of work. Now, we're going to do most of that work in the, in the first few years, like, say, the first five years, and it'll get easier even after the first two. But it's still 50, 80 years worth of work putting all this shit back, back right. And we're going to have to go through at least two generations to get the mines uh, put back right which is another another subject entirely. Um, anyway, though, so it's going to be a very, very inter It is a very interesting world now because all of this shit's popping off now. It's all starting now. And we're seeing um, the early signs of success on a lot of this stuff. As we uh, go forward here, uh, we'll see... Hmm isolated areas of success that will gather around them other successes and then the whole uh, little isolated area of success will get a big boost because something else will happen and will it'll be like a um, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot of success right it'll it'll sort of radiate out and other little successes will come along with it and that's where we're at now this is this combinoric stage where you know, uh, so-and-so makes a movie about Phil Godlewski and uh, everybody that was in his cult, or mostly everybody that was in his cult, wises up and they get out of his cult, okay? And so that particular movie uh, that um, Avalier made um, is a Wi-Fi point of success because it's going to encourage other people to make their own movies, to also call out the grifters, people that are in their cults, like this one guy who's um, making videos now about Gene Decode because he was in Gene Decode's cult. Now, that's something else I was saying earlier, and I'd sort of wandered off of it, is that I'd heard about Phil Godlewski like a year ago, watched one of his little stupid videos where he's saying yes, no to, to questions, and he's so full of shit that, you know, I can't stomach it. And um, I forgot about him, right? I did not get involved. I don't watch his videos. Uh, some people sometimes would send me little clips, and I, I might watch those for a minute, but it was not anything I ever pursued. And so I was, I'm ignorant of the extent of the uh, cult on these individuals, mainly because I think the individuals are full of shit, and um, uh, I'm not following them. And, and so, so I'm not following them. I just, you know, I don't pay any attention to them. I don't realize that they're, they've got a, um, a, a giant growing cult, right? So I don't know how many people were following Phil Godlewski, but he was claiming he's getting 18 million views on vids. And you'd go and look, and it's like, well, you know, there's 30,000 views on that vid. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He says, oh, well, you won't see it because he's got special software that shows you shit that you can't see. Um, from other other sources. Uh, dude, you know, you're just, uh, you know, lying out your ass. You're just blowing this shit out your ass. Uh, you know, such software does not exist. 
that's not how the um, view counts are totaled. All of these views and stuff are uh, controlled. The mechanisms and the algos are fought over by the hosting platforms and the advertisers because somebody's going to be paying for these views. Uh, so a lot of people make money on getting advertising off of their uh, their videos, right? And so if that's the case, these things have to be uh, audited uh, so that, you know, the advertisers are not getting ripped off. And mostly they are uh, getting ripped off because the, you know, the, the platforms are never really as uh, productive for them as uh, they're touting. But in any event, though, so... Uh, so it's not possible that there's hidden numbers that other people can't see. And in fact, when you audit these, you reduce the number of views. You don't add to them. So, you know, because you're taking out all of the bots and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> so you got to watch out for these cultists, guys. you got to put your, your thinking cap on and be, uh, be paranoid. These fuckers are out there trying to steal from you. Scam. Hang on a second. Um, you know, they're, they're basically, uh, you know, heartless sons of bitches and uh, evil motherfuckers. And they're out after your money. So, um, it's dangerous out there. Watch out for yourself. As I say, be paranoid. Paranoia works. That's why we have it. So, anyway, so, uh, Gene Decode is full of shit on all of his stuff. Um, actually, I use as a fairly good metric um, those people that appear on Kerry Cassidy's stuff, right? So I can put it on um, four speed four times speed um, and watch a Carrie Cassidy video and she'll, things will pop up and it'll tell me, oh, she's talking to somebody who's really full of shit. So the very first time I ever heard of Gene Decode was on a Carrie Cassidy interview. And it's like, oh my God, you know, rolling my eyes about this guy. His language does not reflect a, an accurate um, whistleblower who has had a lot of experience in government. It does not. He just doesn't speak as though he's been uh, uh, trained through work uh, to talk government speak. His language just uh, betrays a lot. And I also think he's a low intelligence uh, grifter. Uh, just like I think um, Phil Godlewski has demonstrated he's a low intelligence grifter. Just like um, Corey Good, he demonstrated he's a low intelligence grifter. They do so by suing you, <laughs> exposing themselves to discovery where you find out all of their lies and, and their horseshit. So, you know, they are low intelligence because they know discovery is going to come on up and and they're going to have to um, uh, talk about this shit. You know, uh, Corey Good obviously never thought he would have to, to actually say that he was lying. Um, and he'd have to say under oath that all the crap he said in Gaia was bullshit. He was trying to claim it as intellectual property. If it's factual, if he actually lived it, if it was his lived experience, it is not intellectual property. You could claim that his, uh, one could claim that your feelings, your experience, about that experience, your impressions and so on uh, about the experiences that Corey Good claimed would be um, intellectual property, right? Uh, you'd have to go to the trouble of putting them down in some format, but those indeed would be um, uh, an intellectual property because they were not part of the real experience out and about for everybody. But other than that, you know, the real experience is not able to be uh, tagged as intellectual property. And so when he got into court, he was in a world of hurt because he had to, he was trying to balance it. He was trying to say that he owned all the shit that he told Gaia, but he also had to say that if he owned it, it was all fake. They all, then he made it all up. If it wasn't made up, then he didn't own any of it. Um, his other, his, his many court cases are causing him a, um, a, a real problem here. Uh, he's uh, crashing and burning all kinds of um, uh, 
Well, he lost one case, all kinds of judgments against him, and there's going to be more. Uh, there's probably going to be criminal. I, I expect that we'll also see criminal charges leveled against uh, Godlewski. And we may even see criminal charges against uh, Gene Decode. So, you know, I, I really uh, object to individuals that are anonymous, right? So not Q and not the Anons. That's a different situation. Um, but these individuals that are touting themselves as somehow special and then refuse to show who the fuck they are, it's like, okay, you know, uh, you've got something to hide if you're not showing your face. So Gene Decode has that dog picture up there. Uh, SG Anon, you don't see his face, right? Um, so I don't trust those fuckers. They're, they're hiding something. I know what Gene Decode is hiding, all of his lies and his cult and, and his um, uh, low intelligence. Uh, I don't know what SG Anon is, is hiding. And like um, this Entheos guy, right? All of these people are anonymous. They don't have any um, connections. They don't have any um, uh, actual uh, sources. So. Wow, a lot of snow here. I'm getting inland a bit. It's cold too. But um, a lot of snow on the mountains here, on the hills. Um, so like uh, SG Anon, there's a lot of shit he says that is just full of it. It's absolute bogus. It's, it's crap. Uh, just like in Theos, right? And we know from the Q drops themselves that there are no private comms right? They had to, to explicitly state that in order that we might have the situation we have now where it's a real uh, big pointer, a clue, like a big fucking clue uh, when someone comes on out like Phil Godlewski and says they're connected with Q. Or I think he even said he was Q at one point, right? So it's like, okay, that violates the ethos of the um, Q drops themselves, that there would be no private comms. And so Gene Decode is full of shit, right? Uh, SG Anon is probably full of shit if he's talking uh, that way. I don't I don't listen to these guys that are anonymous. They're, there's no point. They're lying about something. They're hiding something. And maybe they're legitimately hiding from retribution. Well, if that were the case, why the fuck are they talking, right? And so operators don't divulge. So if you're divulging, you're not an operator. You're not part of anything. You're just a LARPer on the outside of it all. And um, that's a pretty good summation of our, our situation here. Uh, Q actually said no private comms, and that sets us up for exactly this situation where we're, we're having these purges where people are, are getting really tired of all of these grifters, right? So I'm tired of um, Charlie Ward and his uh, insiders club, uh, um, you know, selling uh, too expensive gold um, and providing you with um, uh, too optimistic a, a, a projection as to, to the gold being worth more. Gold is good stuff, but it's a store of wealth. It's not, it's not speculation. You know, at this stage, it is true there is speculative aspects of it because you can do little bits of arbitrage and that sort of thing here and there. But as the fiat money collapses, there is no point in selling gold for fiat money. So I know people that are saying, oh, they want to get a safe exit from Bitcoin. And, and they're, you know, they send me emails. How, how you know, when, when should I look to get a, a safe exit uh, from Bitcoin? And then in that same email, the guy says, and, and you know, he doesn't trust Tether uh, or, or these stable coins. So what should he put his, um, you know, as he exits Bitcoin, what should he put that value into? And it's like, well, if you're putting it into fiat in any form whatsoever, you're stupid because you're losing instantly because the fiat is uh, depreciating while the Bitcoin is rising. So it's going, you know, the fiat's going down as the Bitcoin is going up. Um, this is a, a, a real problem for people because they think that, you know, 
and this is also what they're saying basically about the dinar revaluation and the Zimbabwe revaluation, that somehow after they change the digits in the, um, uh, you know, the per value digits for Zimbabwe or something, somehow it is worth more after that uh, alteration at a um, numeric level which is not the case, right? You just have more of a, an increasingly worthless commodity. So if you sell Bitcoin for dollars, you're buying, you're selling a hard to obtain asset for paper, for something that's, you know, that's actually worth less than toilet paper because toilet paper is useful. Um, Oh man, yeah, our world's really fucking complicated. Uh, it's gonna get more so as we go along. Ah, crud, something's going on up here. Emergency vehicles, flashy lights on the freeway. Not a good sign. It's on the other side, so hopefully it won't impact me. Anyway, um, let's pick up on something else here. So no Gasara, no Nasara, no QFS, none of that shit's meaningful. There will be no med beds. I know this, by the way, because I study industrial processes. Um, and so I don't see anywhere are they making um, any kind of control mechanisms that would allow them to control med beds. And besides, we don't have an effective way of getting energy into the body at that level. So it's, you know, it's, it's even worse than hopium. It's um, because people are going to crash and burn around this, you know, putting all their hope in the med beds. A fatal disease, very, you know, terrible suffering and so on when they should be tending to their palliative care and their, um, you know, the future of their, uh, their families, that kind of thing. So anyway, this is why I've, I'm very much against people like Gene Decode. I uh, wouldn't stand him in my presence if I knew that I was standing there talking to him. I think it would come to blows sooner or later, probably sooner than later. Same thing with Phil Godlewski, uh, you know. Uh, eh, such is the life of a clone. <laughs> so yeah, I've been cloned. <laughs> anyway. All right, so. Um, as we're getting into our future here. All right, so tomorrow is the 18th. Now, my data shows that our uh, conditions that will um, manifest in the resultant uh, one-third, more or less, of the uh, release language that's not yet uh, come forward uh, should be rolling out. We won't necessarily see it tomorrow. Oh, excuse me. Maybe we'll see some uh, kind of, um, you know, sort of little events pop up. Maybe there'll be something political. Maybe we'll get uh, more release of, um, uh, you know, secrets revealed, that kind of thing. Like the secrets that, you know, Obama used the military intelligence of the rest of the world to spy on Trump, right? So we're talking a coup. So all of the, the details about the Obama coup uh, are coming out at this level from, you know, from Obama, uh, from his uh, reign forward. And maybe we'll get more information about uh, how Obama got into the position of power, all of this kind of stuff, right? Maybe that will come on out. But that, but whatever it is, it's not, in my opinion, is not going to very likely is not going to be a single event that is going to, uh, you know, shock the world or anything. This is a uh, a release language level that won't be um, easily absorbed, and it'll be uh, it will take us some considerable time uh, to absorb it and integrate it. Uh, into our understanding because it's so large. I think it's going to be financial. So I'm of the opinion that there will be something that will occur tomorrow 
or may even occur today um, on the 17th that will relate to the finances that will cause us a lot of uh, consternation and issues in the future that will produce this level of release language. And so maybe we'll have, you know, some level of a bank default or bonds going bad or whatever. There's a lot of rumors that um, treasury bonds had been um, faked, that, you know, not real faked, not by some third party, but rather uh, rehypothecated. So the same treasury bond was sold to different people, different organizations, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know how solid these rumors are, um, but the fact that they're out there circulating gives one pause about uh, the potential that they are indeed factual and that they would impact. And so that's that would be a big fucking deal if that were to, to be uh, shown to be the case, that if there are, you know, dozens of uh, each treasury bond out there, well, fuck, you know, that would be ultimate quadrillions of fake money and no one would be able to know uh, which treasury bond was legit and there would be mass chaos in the bond markets which would roil the stock market and, and affect everything else and would probably cause a big giant straight up move in the cryptos which is going to be coming anyway just as the uh, fiat currency continues to die so, uh, as I say, it's going to be an interesting couple of months. Tomorrow, I think, is the start at some level, uh, just because of where the data was. And we'll probably never know what the uh, actual proximate cause was on that day for whatever comes out. Unless it's, you know, some, some false flag or black swan or something that gets a lot of press. But I was never expecting that aspect of it. I was expecting a... Um, a level of uh, increasing release language stemming from something that would come out of the the back channels, so to speak, right? That would emerge out of the banking world or something. We'll see. Um, you know, and also, by the way, it's, you know, one to three days off on uh, projections on days because of the nature of the way the data is. Uh, immediacy language, etc. Um... Anyway, so we will see uh, this release language come, come out over the rest of February and into March, and uh, we'll be building in a very steep angle, really, of uh, our release uh, language relative to uh, the political situation and all of this sort of thing. And so uh, it's going to be, as I say, quite chaotic. But this is the time, in my opinion, to get out and do shit, right? Rather than just sit there and worry about it all. This is why I'm going to look at this, you know, yet another rehab project. <laughs> like, I really needed that. Anyway, I've obviously got karma with um, housing issues, right? And so, so we'll see. I'm going to go and look at this place. Probably going to buy it. I mean, I'm getting fairly serious about it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fucking work, and, and it's going to be a race to make sure, or to, to try and get it done in time for our actual real-world needs, uh, but also to get us out of the house we're in now so that we don't have to endure being there as the thing is basically um, uh, enlarged and then gutted. So the contractor did such a piss-poor job that after we get the extension, the, the addition of these... Um, uh, bedrooms and wheelchair accessible bathrooms and stuff uh, and a new entryway and all of that put on there on the house then I gotta have somebody come on in and and uh, gut the place we're in now and uh, take us down to the studs in many of the rooms because there's fucking mold in there because the contractor didn't do right uh, by the um, in the in the installation of all the plumbing in the in the second floor that's another issue is, you know, I don't really like having the second floor, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the house I'm going to go look at is two stories, uh, but it's it's easy access on the main floor, uh, so I can just get Kathy in without any problems, you know, and also we've got two bedrooms on the main floor and everything else is there, so I'll use the, um, it's a daylight basement kind of a situation. I'll use that 
uh, the downstairs for um, uh, exercise area and an office because there's no outbuildings at this place. Uh, we'll have to put on a garage and do some things there later, but uh, they won't necessarily have to um, be uh, done uh, while we're living in it, right? I mean, it won't affect us living in it because it's a, we'll have it as outbuildings. Okay, so our pea palace is coming up. So I'll disconnect and then start up another one after the necessary break. And there we go. So I'll start another one of these in a few minutes.